Yes, welcome to here to the Copper Box Arena on the Olympic Park in London. And what a day we have. It is the finals day in the London Basketball Classic presented by Inspira Sports. Two Danes remaining and a championship on the line later. And some fantastic American college hoops here on this side of the Atlantic. Yes, hi everybody, I'm Mark Woods alongside college basketball legend and British basketball star of the last 20 years, Mike Tuck. And good morning to you if you're in America, good afternoon if you're watching us in the UK. And it is a treat here we have in store. Two more games. Later on, we'll have the championship in the line, the inaugural London Basketball Classic title up for grabs between Princeton University and Northeastern. That game tipping off at 5 p.m. here in the UK, 12 p.m. if you're on the east coast of the United States. But first is the third place playoff between Army and Manhattan College. I mean, a long flight on the way back to the States tomorrow, Mike and you'd kind of prefer to have that feel-good factor with the victory. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you come over here, play overseas, an exciting experience for everybody, but you want to cap that off with a win. You know, you're not coming out here to lose these games. And, you know, seeing a few of these guys in the hotel after that last game, uh, def definitely from the Army side, they were disappointed in that loss. Yeah, and, and talking about the reception we've had, over, you know, these players have been out doing community events. They've had a chance to see the sights of, of London over the last few days. And, Fans Thursday night, what an atmosphere we had, you know, people getting a rare opportunity to see college hoops up, up close and it, it's been great to see the, the atmosphere this has created. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a rare showcase of NCAA basketball over here and I think it's a, it's a great little segue for people to to get an insight on, on what the college game looks like over in the States and, you know, the atmosphere, the vibe, we've got the cheerleaders here, the bands, you know, they've really brought the full experience across the pond. And as one of your college days, of course, were at Loyola and you get that real sense of community, that real vibe of everyone getting behind the scenes. And, you know, th these colleges have brought supporters over, they've got alumni here as well in London have come along. It, is that real bonding experience between the basketball teams and the fans around them? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was the same experience I had when I was at Loyola. Whenever we traveled away to games, there would always be, you know, a Greyhound contingent behind us. And you get that really sense, that family sense, that family vibe. And that's what the college basketball atmosphere at FEAR is all about. But it's great to see that these guys have been doing a little bit of work in the community while they've been here, having an impact on the local kids, uh, especially over at the, the West Ham uh, foundation and you know really getting you know a sight of, of what London looks like Army there on their huddle on the court they had a tough night the other night they ran Princeton so well for long periods in Thursday semi-final just fell away from the end but they'll they'll take in a lot from that game that they'll look to bring into tonight or today's action yeah definitely I mean disappointing loss for them that I just felt like they could never really get over that hump especially down in that in that fourth quarter but some some real positive takeaways from that game obviously uh the big the their big fella peterson had a really good uh, fourth quarter uh chris mann was really consistent throughout and and then the young guard rucker he was you know as consistent as could be for from the guard slot so a lot of positives i think they're just going to need a couple more guys to step up to get them over the edge today and manhattan you know again they had a terrific game against northeastern the other night you know it's it you know went all the way to the wire from that, and you know a team coming here today, you know one and three record for the season, but you know they'll again they'll believe that they can come out and take the victory. Yeah, and this is a, you know a young team, but it is a very talented team. And I think the only thing that this team is really missing is a little bit of key leadership from from certain players. But we saw huge performances, especially from Roberts, with 19 points and 17 rebounds. So I think. He might, he might be on charge to have another big one tonight. Well, we are underway. Army in gray. The Jaspers in white. Manhattan starters Nelson, Hayun, Roberts, Buchanan, and Brennan. As for Army, Rutger, Benson, Mann, Roberts, and Peterson. 
the two starting fives. Yeah. And the other night, if we, you talk about Manhattan, I mean, that game went all the way to overtime. I mean, it was drama at the end of regulation, a, a technical infringement that, that forced probably OT in that one. Then they went down, but they'll probably have a point to prove off that one, a game that probably slipped out of their grasp. Yeah, they're going to be disappointed with that one. It was a, a rare technicality at the end there, and going to be pretty mad that that one actually did end up going to overtime, but... A tough game, but I think they probably learned a lot of lessons through that game. And like I said, this is a talented team. They've got a lot of different guys that can step up and do different things. Um, so that's a, you know always a dangerous thing when you have a team where multiple guys can step up and have double figure nights. Foul on the floor there as the jump shot went up from Raziel Hayun. And speaking to Manhattan coach Rashawn Stories just before the game, he said, you know, the big keys for us today is rebounding, but also no live ball turnovers. He wants to see that execution. It's still early in the season, the conference schedule ahead, you're learning, and he wants to cut out those mistakes. Yeah, I mean, you looked at that last game with Manhattan, the amount of turnovers that turned into opportunities down the other end. Um, you know, a lot of deflections and a lot of second chance opportunities. The guys weren't boxing out, uh, not getting to their, their, their checks and, and taking care of the defensive boards. So that's probably going to be on the scout sheet tonight. Both teams need to do a much better job of that. Yeah, and speaking of Jimmy Allen, our Army's head coach is in here for us. We want to take care of the ball offensively. We want to show poise. We know the Manhattan bring their press. They've got a very strong press, particularly out on the wings. We want to make sure that we deal with that. And defensively, we need to stop Manhattan in transition. You're chased on rebounds and, I guess, be alert. You want to be alert and, and do those little things right. Yeah, presence of mind to, to slow the ball down in transition. Manhattan is a team full of athletes. They really like to get out and run the ball. So Army, you know, I think for me, defensively, they've got to get it together. But offensively, they've got to get a lot better flow, especially down, down the stretch. But, you know, you, you look at Army, you know, they're just such a um, – they're just – a military team you know they're very strong they're very uh they're very well well trained and conditioned and and um they have to use those things to their advantage tonight Clinton Benson with that big three to get army on the board tonight shooting the ball really well from deep 42 percent so far in this campaign giving the black knights their first lead can they extend it now Off the glass, and it drops in for Ethan Roberts. Great take from Ethan Roberts. He had some really good moments in that last game. He's picking up where he left off. A strong take down the middle. Manhattan not doing a great job on the one-on-one. -on -one. Shot off from Nelson. Had a ice free throw at the end of regulation against Northeastern. Shot clock at 18. It's 30 second shot clock for those of you more used to the FIBA rules. Possession arrow in favor of Army. Only two and four on the season. Chris Mann, who had a terrific game the other night, misses that rebound. Returns, another opportunity. Roberts, the dagger from deep. What a start from Ethan Roberts here. Back-to-back -back baskets, but Manhattan not able to close out on, on that board. Offensive board, another shot opportunity for Army, and, and they capitalize. Corner is good. Nick Brennan stops the 8 0 run. They go there.
drive in. Tough score from Jalen Rucker. And there's Jalen Rucker again, able to attack the paint. That's where his strength is, attacking the paint. Incredible right-handed layup there from the young fellow. Special defense from the Jaspers at half court. Elaine, though, has opened up. Take an advantage by Benson. Army really attacking the paint right now, doing a great job of creating lanes, taking opportunities. Manhattan defensively not up to par. Tough. Opportunity from Brennan results in a foul. Timeout has been called. With Army with a 12 5 lead. This tournament, part though of a much bigger picture for both Inspira Sports and Sport Changes Lives to really make an impact off the court as well. We're joined by Two of the main figures, the dynamic husband and wife duo, Deirdre Brennan and Gareth McGuire. Um, Deirdre, you've seen this from the very start. It's an amazing event, isn't it? It's fantastic, and I think it will be a life-changing experience for all the student athletes who are involved, and that's very much what we are about, because this has grown out of the Sport Changes Life Foundation, where we've had that flagship program, the Victory Scholar program, that gives student athletes the opportunity to come over and study at postgraduate level while also doing really important work in the community. Yeah, tell us more about the, the Aspirants Global Education Initiative. Um, I mean, it is a really a big difference. We have a great opportunity for, for young people to benefit through sport but through education. Absolutely. So really Inspires Global Education is a sister company of Inspire Sports and it's, pro it's about providing a platform for any student, not just student athletes, but absolutely any student to pursue studying abroad. There's so many benefits to that. We have three daughters that are studying abroad in the United States. We miss them desperately, but the benefits are huge. They get to experience a different education system, which is challenging, takes them out of their comfort zone, different cultural practices and behaviors, and they go home with a completely different global perspective, which is, you can't put a price on that. Gareth, when you've been talking to the young men and women who have come over to this side of the Atlantic, and they've been enriched by the experience. What's, what's been the big takeaways they've had when they've, they've gone home? It, it's a great question. There are so many, but I guess it's that cultural experience, it's that change in life opportunity of going to another country. This man's experience that, you know, and they end up living, wanting to stay. Many of our scholars have ended up staying. And, and unfortunately, that's a bad sign for our three daughters. They're probably going to end up staying in, <laughs> staying in the States. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to go back and forth. It's definitely the cultural experience and meeting new people spending time with different people and understanding how different parts of the world work. One of the things that came out of the, the pandemic really is how can we bring the world together and how we can make things people connect again. Sport's a great vehicle, education's a great vehicle for that to happen. And for these four colleges that have come over, I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You had four teams in North Core Universities in Dublin just a few weeks ago, Didri. The players, the coaches, they all talk about just the value that they get out of this. Even a few days overseas, it it broadens their minds, they learn new things, you know, it enriches them for their future lives beyond university, beyond basketball. A hundred percent. And that can be the case for any student, but particularly for student athletes, because they're tied into their scholarship, they have limited opportunities to study abroad, to take a semester abroad like any ordinary student can do. So that's why it will be a life-changing experience uh, for all the young men that have participated in both this tournament and in Dublin. And Gareth, where's the growth in this scheme here you know, with the, the, the global education program, the sports changes lives? You know, where do you take? Well, you know, we, we, we see this as a classic series. You know, we, we're in London, we're, we're in Ireland, whether that be Dublin or Belfast. We're talking to Dubai, we're talking to other countries who like this idea and this concept. It's all through basketball, so it's a sport that we love. It's, you couldn't beat it. Well, the action here has been terrific. If you want to know as we see a terrific basket there. Drive from Jalen Rucker that extends Army's lead. If you want to know more about this, give us the website address. What was that? I didn't hear that one. Your website. Gareth is website. too fascinated so, by the action. Inspirasports.com is, is the first port of call. And then Inspirus Global Education. 
is the second one in terms of the, the student recruitment for students throughout the U.S. Well, we wish you both continued success in that. What a great event it's been this weekend. Thanks for having us here. We really appreciate you being here. It means an awful lot. It really does sincerely. So thank you both for giving us the time. Thank you, Gareth. And thank Deirdre. you. The lead cut slightly by Manhattan there. Watson's three-pointer. Reduces the gap between these two teams to five points. In line ball for Army, 25 on the clock. That's the five minute mark. Rucker alive early, orchestrating things for the Black Knights. Here he is again for three. Just comes out. Scramble for the board in the hands of Stewart. Stewart red shoes. Feeding the wing. Buchanan. Career high 19 points against Northeastern. So confident. Shot clock down to 10. Off target. Jared Cross, open, takes advantage. Great shot there from Jared Cross. <clears throat> Left wide open on the wing. Manhattan only hitting four guys back and leaving Jared for a wide open opportunity. Junior from Virginia. Ali, it's stuffed in by Josh Roberts. Oh, my Lord. Josh Roberts. I think he hit his head on the ceiling there. Great alley -oop pass to the big man. Well, we know his athleticism leading that the Mac and rebounds and blocks. He has air time. Stripped away by Roberts. Terrific defense. Good hands on the ball there, able to create a fast break opportunity down the other end of transition. Wonderful alertness. From Jalen Rucker, capitalized by Chris Mann. Rucker, great patience there. Not forcing up a quick shot and finding the diving Chris Mann. Easy left-hand layup for two. Yeah, this game as competitive as we were expecting. I should say, three officials here this afternoon. Carl Luciano, Adam Vandenberg, and Ed Corbett, Jr., these teams have really been out and about. You know, talking to Jimmy Allen, the Army head coach, before the game, you said yesterday we'd we were out seeing the sights of London, seeing Westminster Cathedral. You know, he'd been here once when he was at, as a child, so he didn't remember much about it. You know, again, you know, what a city to be able to come when you're this age and see some of these historic buildings and historic places that you read about in the books. Yeah, definitely. You know, as a, as a you know these kids growing up in America, they'll they'll see the movies about London. They'll they'll you know read all the books and all that kind of thing but then when you get over here london is such a magical city and there's so much to do so much to see what an incredible experience for these young men army leading 19 11. it's the 73rd meeting between these teams army with a 45 to 27 advantage of so the first meeting that went 23 years the black knights off to a strong start another rebound another defensive stand Good little take by Watson there. A little bit of contact on the way up. Not able to finish, but he was a huge key factor for the, for the Manhattan, Manhattan Jaspers in the last game. AJ Allen Spock is checked in for Army. Will be a Manhattan ball. Nick Brennan, great job getting his feet set and holding his ground, taking it on the chest. Offensive foul. Manhattan with another opportunity down the other end here. And, you know, it's a good little timeout from them on the last possession. Sitting here at 19-11, you know, they don't want, Manhattan right now don't want to let the game get, get, ahead, get ahead of them too much or see this lead grow anymore. So right now it's about chipping away. Every possession matters. Army making five of their last six field goal attempts. Manhattan missing that one. Chris Mann has checked back in. Samir Stewart, haranguing the ball. They get it inside. 
into the hands of Charlie Peterson. Drew the foul. Charlie Peterson, a very skilled big man. We got a great look at him last game through that fourth quarter. He had some key baskets for Army. Really, at, at times, the only guy who could really get it going offensively uh, in that fourth quarter. But he's going to be a big, big factor for them in the paint tonight. Yeah, Manhattan have shot the ball very well all this season. They've been over 40% in every single one of their four games so far. Just 25% though from the field this afternoon struggling. You expect that will come good eventually. Yeah, and I think a few of the teams here over the weekend so far have struggled, uh, especially from the three-point line. I think just a different different style of gym, different arena, maybe even different rims from what they're used to. And could be something in the air, too, this British air. Is there really a difference in the European rims? Uh, one thing, uh, Dave Hopler, you know, shooter extraordinaire, who we'll be talking to later on today, you know, saying the, the ball is the biggest difference. You know, when you go international, different style ball, different manufacturer, whatever. I mean, that could be obviously a big transition factor if you're going from one country to. I mean, they're playing with college ball today, obviously, but you know, you, you, these things, there's little quirks and differences that we probably don't notice up front in different types of basketball. Yeah, that was a huge thing when I first came over, playing playing with the molten ball, which is the FIBA ball. It's uh, got a much different grip, a much different feel to it than, uh, like, for example, the Rock or, or a Wilson ball that we typically used when, my, when I was over in, in college. So <clears throat> the ball is a big thing. But talking to Dave Hoppe about different style rims, different style backboards, and he said, well, listen, the ball's not supposed to touch the rim. It's supposed to go straight in. So <laughs> if you're shooting it well enough, the rim doesn't even matter. Well, he was explaining to me that they, the college ball as it is, the difference he finds on it is that it, sticks in the net whereas other balls get through clean well, there you go small technicalities but Romano shot I know he's probably million shots in the course of his life I mean, you know these things yeah I mean the molten ball is much more slicker it, so it, it'll slide through through the, the the mesh much easier whereas yeah like the rock or, or a Wilson ball has a little bit more grip to it a little bit more sticky so it'll catch on that mesh a little bit more and that can be a factor when trying to get the ball out, trying to get down the other end, you know, trying to make a, create a fast break opportunity, but the ball takes that extra half second to slide out the rim. Teams have talked things over. Sean Storrs out. Only one final word with his team. Of course, got his first victory of his head coaching career on Thursday night. Yesterday, exactly one month into his head coaching stint with Manhattan. Peterson, 50% free throw shooter on the season. Makes his first low of averages and all that. Does he make this? Yes, he does, above the average. <laughs> 10 point lead for the first time in this game. Yeah, great free throws there. Able to put them up into double digits here. Not what Manhattan wants to see in this first 10 minutes of the game. Samir Stewart through the lot pass. And is taken gratefully by Josh Roberts. And Roberts just really picking up where he left off from last game. You know, using his size, using his athleticism. That's a play we saw a couple couple minutes earlier. So they're, they're going back to it here. And Peterson undercutting him a, a bit there. Roberts, Roberts able to finish the and one basket. Fifth year player out of Alabama. A career high 17 rebounds against Northeastern on Thursday. Now in this game, six points. Seven points. The lead for Army. clock at 10 they go outside Colton Benson thought about the long range now trying to prize it they go cross court Roberts is deadly incredible three-pointer there from Roberts two for two on the night he's got the hot hand he's feeling it Second 
Ankita makes for Army. They're putting all the pressure on Manhattan as we reach the midway point in this first half. Wonderful feed. Triple team comes. Roberts fouled. Nelson frustrated. Well, maybe a symptom of the frustration of the team right now, Mike. Yeah, definitely frustrating. You know, down 10 here, early, early doors. They Not what they want. The ball's pinging around for Army. Roberts, great decision to, to let that one fly there. And we see not able to connect on that. Great little kick out here. Nelson flying at the shooter, but <coughs> end up ca catching him on the on the wrists. We talk about the difference in balls. Though. You just said something. Early doors. Is that something that, I mean, you you grew up in Canada, you played collegiately in America. Is early doors an exclusively British phrase? That's uh, yeah. I, I tell people this today all the time. They I say I've lived here for so long. You, you've never picked up the accent. I said, yeah, I haven't picked up the accent, but I can speak British. <laughs> <laughs> Mike got an almost well, decade plus career at Sheffield Sharks that came to an end last summer and are pursuing your business career i guess we could call it and i remember a sky sports broadcast crew here in the uk what's two of two from the line takes his tally to 11 points three of three in fact Big week of basketball here at the Copper Box with the two games on Thursday, two games today, last night. The hometown here is the London Lions. We're here, obviously, it was a great atmosphere for Friday Night Hoops here in Cheshire in the, the BBL Cup competition. Club with very big ambitions playing in the Euro Cup this year. Preparing to put British basketball on the international map. That's so important as well as to create that reputation overseas. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, trying to make a name for themselves and, you know, being the ambassadors to the sport for here in, in, in the British League. But creating a name for themselves on mainland Europe is always uh, a big deal, gaining that respect. Yeah, terrific. And Coach Ryan Schmidt, who's taking advantage of a great opportunity this season with the Lions. Young coach here at the shape of Rashawn Stores. And I, the sideline calling the plays. Yeah, and if I'm Stores, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in this this Manchester side right now. You know, or Manchester, Manhattan side, excuse me. Um, just not able to find a rhythm on, on offense. Doesn't really look like much co cohesiveness there. Need to get it some sets run. Get an easy one. See the ball go through the basket. Look at that energy from Arm from uh, Army right here. You know, not giving up on the play. Playing physical. Kick out to Benson. Benson is good. Monster three from Benson there. Great little drive. From Jared Cross and able to draw the defense in, kick out for a wide open three. 9-0 run. Let's push the lead out to 16. Once again, Manhattan just kind of looking like a one-trick pony here. Not, not using the clock to their advantage. Chris Mann pulling up here. Foul under the basket. Just to remind you again, if you just joined us, the championship game later on will feature Princeton against Northeast in the battle to be the champions of the London Basketball Classic. And that's a 5 o'clock start in the UK and a 12 p.m. start if you're in the east coast of the United States and following us. And if you are, thank you so much for tuning in and giving us a part of your Saturday. I hope you're enjoying the action and if you're following your teams from afar, and very proud of the way they carried themselves here over in, in London.
Chris Mann drives baseline. Picked off though. Nelson on the break. Great play from Nelson there. We saw him last game getting out in the lanes, and he's a guy who could play in the open court in transition. Good little steal and a two. Much needed for Manhattan right now. Nelson's first score of the game. There will be a few more. We need a few more. And now we see this Manhattan team waking up, coming alive here. A lot more energy, especially on the defensive end, helping create some opportunities on the offense. Scramble for the board into the hands of Manhattan. Watson on the wing. They go into the paint. And now we see this Manhattan side really coming alive here, really making a, a push for it. And I think the game's gotten a little bit more scrappy. They're, they're pushing for some offensive rebounds. This will play into their favor. One person who would like to come, have, come back is Athletics Director Marion Riley. Um, welcome, um, welcome to London. First of all, foremost, are you having a great time here in our fine nation? We'll just talk to Marion in a second here as the, the cheer squad comes on. Hopefully we can uh, we can hear you now. We'll just get the headphones on. Marianne. No, you, know, you can hear it in the background. No, oh, we can hear you. Now we That's can, better. Now I can hear you clear. too. So we'll you again. You're having a fun weekend. This has been a wonderful experience, um, not only for those who traveled with the team, but certainly the team uh, themselves, just to be exposed to the community and bring our love of sports to the community. So it's been, it's been wonderful. Is this the Jasper's second time in the UK in four years? I was there four years ago and fell hit the Belfast Classic. It was the first time we'd seen this for a while. And, it, and, it, and as, as a collegiate institution, as a scholastic institution, how important is it to get this kind of exposure internationally? Put the name of Manhattan out there as well, Christian. Certainly the branding for the institution um, is there and it helps um, spread the word, the Jasper. What is the Jasper? Please you don't know what Jaspers are. Um, so to be able to have that communication with the with the community is, is wonderful energy there. Um, so I, I the remember when we went to Belfast, there was such an electricity and because I have to say, it's it's just the first time that we were bringing to basketball over there. And, um, this, I, I think we may have one or two the young men that are still on the team from that experience. But, um, just for us to travel internationally to not only bring our love of the sport to the place that we're going, but to engage the schools and the students is tremendous and you know everybody has a, a life story whether you're here or in Belfast and no. our, our own student athletes and um, the other day when we went to the school um, our head coach uh, Rashawn Stores was talking about a brotherhood and how the team is truly like a brotherhood and, and a young man who had played for us um, unfortunately had to deal with a bout of cancer so coach was talking about that and about how he used to take him for treatments and and it must have rang home with one of the students. And um, he came up to him afterwards and wanted to talk more about it because he was dealing with that in his own life. I and mean, you know, as an AD, you, you, you look across all the different sports and the student athletes that you have at, at Manhattan. And, you know, we talk about scholastics mm -hmm. and how important that is to sit alongside athletics and all that. But when you're, I guess, adding opportunities like this, broad in players' mind, even the coaches' mind, to look at our country. This must be such a terrific add-on to to give to just that little bit more, give us something different they couldn't have back at home. Absolutely. I've been associated with um, Sport Changes Life since 2014, and um, I didn't know Gareth very well then, but I had um, a young man uh, at Fordham University become a Victory Scholar. And I remember him saying, well, I could be an assistant coach at one of the other D1 schools. And I'm like, you have an opportunity to go to another place and learn their culture and bring our culture over there. And he came back from that trip and said, thank you so much for that experience. It changed my life. And now he's a special assistant to the Golden State Warriors. And then a couple of years later, we had another victory scholar from our defunct uh, women's tennis team who went over uh, with Gareth 
to Dubai and ran the women's men's women's tennis um, championship over there. So it changed her life, but hopefully they have touched others where it's changed their life and see that there's a way through sport. And finally, 14 points for Dan. Right? What do they need to do? Where are you? Know, what's going on here? They're, they're, they've got to get a little bit more discipline, take their time. Uh, do some of the little things right that we weren't doing. Um, take good shots. I don't want to call that one the best shots, but to take good shots and just wear them down. Army's a very disciplined, tough team, and uh, we're going to have to really um, lock down a little bit in the second half as we get closing on the first half. Well, there Charlie we go. Peterson was clearly listening. Here's Samir Stewart on the break. <laughs> Almost got it for you there. Get the follow up and it goes in. Josh Roberts. Thank you very much, Mario, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us again. Look forward to the next time we all get together. Yeah, come back soon. All right. The time light is called, and we're at 20 place 30. A little bit of a rally on the cards of Manhattan. I see someone's listening to Lady up here. <laughs> That's She's it. The, she is the boss lady. That's it. So I listen to the boss. She must be a little lady. inspiration there. And Manhattan's starting to get out on the run, starting to, to get it to turn defense into offense and putting the pressure in the ball and forcing turnovers. Yeah, it's it's coming pretty obvious that that Manhattan really likes to push push the pace of the game. You know, they they're much more comfortable when when uh, when the speed and the tempo of the game is more up tempo. Uh, in the half court set, we haven't seen enough from them tonight, but. Like I said, they need to turn this into a little bit more of a scrappier game and, and start to push the pace a little bit more. That's how they're going to get back in it. But, you know, we're only we're sitting here five minutes left in the first half. You play this first half to get to the second half. So one possession at a time, one play at a time. Don't give up. Keep yourselves in it. Ethan Roberts, the Army leads all scores, 11 points so far. Cross, lob across. Ball movement in the perimeter sets up Roberts. Three or five shooting from the field today. Nice. Five minutes to play here in this first half. And from deep, Hyun converts. Big shot from Hyun there. A little pick action. He saw a little breathing room. Let it fly. Big shot that they need right now. Cuts the lead down to seven. First through the goal, five points for the Israeli. Jasper's cheer squad turning up the volume. The band here as well today. It's such a treat for us to have this all the way from the Bronx in New York. Watson guided by Rucker. Bides his time. They go quick, they go early. Number three shooting three. Doesn't drop. First man shot a little bit too much mustard on it. Let's call on that. Hayun tried to keep the ball in bounds. Sporting Lee offers his apologies to Charlie Peterson for knocking the ball off him. A heads, up, heads up play there. <laughs> in every sense. Position to the Jasper. Adam Cissé. That's the ball in bounds. Stewart has returned to the fray on the ball now. Go for five shooting today. Has three assists. Been able to orchestrate turnover though. Great hands Army, from Army three there. On two. John Rucker off the screen. Goes outside. Back to Rucker. Man stripped away by Stewart. Scrambles on the floor. Good alertness to make sure he didn't lose that hard one possession. That's the, kind, that's the type of energy you want to see on the defensive end. Guys diving on the floor for, for loose balls and getting the hands up. Stewart pulls the trigger. Short on that attempt. 
two for four from three point range. This from Benson. Forced by Ness. Drive in off the glass. Oh. Tough score. Extremely Watson. tough score. You know, Watson, we saw that on Thursday night. He's he's a great job using his length, those long arms, able to finish in, in traffic. Zero run from Manhattan over the last five and a half minutes. Stopped though, finally stopped by Colton Benson. Great little pull up jumper there from Benson. He thought he got hit on the three on the last possession, able to make up the difference with a pull up jumper down the other end. Starting to get it going though. Three of 15 from three point range. Forcing turnovers. The timeout is taken here. 149 remaining. What's been an excellent first half show. Yeah, we had two brilliant games on Thursday evening. We'll take another overtime thriller today. Maybe even two. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah. Are we couldn't, greedy there? Couldn't have even ask for a, a better opening game with that, that overtime. Uh, overtime thriller but yeah like we said earlier just a great showcase for the sport over here in, in london giving the fans some insight on, on on what the college basketball scene looks like over in the states a good alternative away from the uh, the rigors of the football world cup a bit of a depression you were out in london last night a bit of a depressive feel from yeah was well, uh, the, the, the local team not beating the u.s team yeah no england versus usa was a bit of a dry game in my opinion <laughs> Nil nil draw, which you no, no. can't get in basketball. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was very glad I made the decision to come right here to the Copper Box to watch London against Cheshire rather than. Uh, well, I was going to say sitting at a pub, but you, know, you can have a beer here, it's fine. That's the beauty of basketball. You come inside, out of the cold, out of the rain, come sit down, watch some sport with a beer in your hand. And it is it's a beautiful setting here at the Copper Box, if you don't know it, right in the heart of. What was the Olympic Park in 2012? Iconic venues, memories of a decade ago when the world came to London and watched London and the Olympic flame was lit. And you know, I went, out. I spent a lot of time working those games. Went out for a bike ride this morning around the park. And you know, the park has changed so much. A lot of development around the east end of London over the, over the last decade to build on the Olympic legacy. But you get that special vibe when you go past the velodrome or the Olympic Stadium or the Copper Box. It brings back the memories of a very special couple of months with the Paralympics as well. Yeah, I'm sure it does. You know, unfortunately, I, I did, wasn't able to be there and play in that, but. Walking over from the hotel with Kieran the other day, and he just kind of saw the glint in his eyes. You know, amazing memories for him being able to be involved in, in the Olympic Games. And, you know, they call this the Olympic Legacy Park. It's, that's what it's leaving here is, is the legacy of, of what those games brought to the city. Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, is it will forever be known? Transformation around study every time I come back to this part of London you know it's, a, it's changed some more very much for the better power of the Olympics and what it's left behind only hoping to leave behind that win here will have a fresh miss but the alertness on the follow up there yeah it like, looks like caught them sleeping their army didn't uh, thought maybe there was two shots and Samir Stewart able to get in there with the putback. And all of a sudden, this lead is cut down to five. Manhattan doing a great job of just sticking around and trusting the process. Thirteen-two run for Manhattan. Difference was ten. Double team pressure defense forces the turnover. Jaspers have numbers. Zamir Stewart 
pulls it. Does he finally get one? Yes, he does. Great decision there from Samir Stewart. You know, the putback, the double team, the turnover, and a three-pointer. Now we have a two-point ball game as we close in on halftime. One of five now from three-point range. But the momentum with the Jaspers. Foul. As the drive went. And you said it right there. All the momentum with Manhattan right now. 16-2 run over the last six minutes and 40 seconds. Shots not falling for Army now. Just one of the last seven to find strength from the field. Benson. Double figures, 11 points in this game. This is fresh trip to the foul line. As both coaches bring the changes for this last 62 seconds of the first half. Jared Cross has returned for Army, working in the backcourt alongside Jalen Rucker. Two of two from the line for Benson. And two much needed points there for Army as they try to cling on to this lead here with 55 seconds left. Time time there from Hayun. Drew the foul. Now Peterson's not going to be happy with that foul call. A little nicked him on the arm as he went up. Hayun not able to finish, but rewarded with a trip to the line. Peterson's second foul. So two damaging. Army on team fouls, though. Hayun makes the first. And Hayun, a guy didn't see too much of in the, in the game on Thursday, but he's really making his mark tonight. Four or six on the foul line. Three points of one shot game. Not anymore, though. What a beautiful feat capitalized upon by Jared Cross. And the defense was overplaying. He took advantage of the backdoor cut. Beautiful pass there. Great finish. Cross with seven points. 24 seconds remaining in the half. Jasper's ball, top of the key. Floater, that's a battle for the rebound. Couldn't get it. 13 seconds to go, shot clock is off. Rucker in possession. Skips past Nelson. Does he get it off the glass? No, scramble for the rebound. Three seconds left. Battling through was Peterson. He will go to the foul line. He's yet to miss this evening. Two previous trips. Don't like that foul there from Roberts. I think you should just stay stood straight up. Make him finish over your arms. Peterson with another chance here to give him a little bit more insurance for that second half. And not able to capitalize on that first shot. Peterson Jr. from Indianapolis. for two there no shot off and that will do it for the first half which will end with army holding a 36 to 31 advantage over manhattan and really for me it's it's been that shooting percentage just particularly early in the game for army that's carried them into this advantage right yeah i mean you know shooting 48 percent from the field and 38 percent from three much better shooting effort from them tonight and just Looking a little bit more poised throughout that first 20 minutes there, but obviously Manhattan making some really good runs and uh, making a good push there, pulling it within five at the half. Um, it's been, you know, you looked at that really tough start that they had and the really good start that, that Army got, getting off into that 12 2 lead. My, you know, they were talking before the game about taking care of the ball and being poised and that was a big thing early in the game they were, they were executing so well 
Yeah, I mean, we talked about Army, you know, the military school. They're very disciplined. They're very strong. They run They run sets to a T, uh, and, and we saw that from them tonight. They just looked like the more put-together team out there on the floor. Manhattan had, had, they had their moments, though, and Manhattan, a much more, you know, athletic team, a team that probably doesn't want to play as much in the half-court set, so they want to get out and run and, and really push the ball, use their athleticism, and make it a little bit more of a scrappier game. You know, I think that's when they play at their best, like, a little bit more scrappy and make the other team really have to dig down and defend. The biggest lead the Army had was 14 points, or 16 points, pardon me, 30 to 14. But then really the change in that full pressure from Manhattan, forcing mistakes, and they began to find that offensive rhythm of their own. Yeah, and I think that's sometimes what it takes is, you know, a good defense can create a good offense. And I think they just, they just needed to get a couple stops there, and that really... Uh, really pushed them on and, and gave them that, that confidence down the other end. Well, it has been a wonderful first half. It is a five-point ball game. There is all to play for. Mike and I will be back for the second half very shortly. <laughs> associated with winning. But what do you think? We as Victory Scholars represent these three words. Sport changes life. We believe that you can achieve victory in every aspect of your life. I believe in inspiring young people and a good education. This sport has changed my life. But I don't just believe in victory. I am victory. Apply now at sportchangeslife.com. On a campus full of the unexpected, you'll find a place unlike any other. Alumni all over the world. Minutes from Midtown Manhattan on 23 beautiful acres. We're Jaspers. We welcome distinction and embrace you as you are. Here, your worldview expands. You build unbreakable bonds and you serve the greater good where you'll prepare for a life of meaning and become who you're meant to be. We're building for the future. We're here to shape lives. We're making an impact. We're making a change. On and off the pitch. Because we are a family and we take care of our own. For Eileen, that's friendship. A way back in from the cold. I was in a very bad place. My marriage had broken up. I had really bad depression and anxiety. I nearly lost my children, really, because... Um, they just didn't know how to cope. Everyone has their breaking point, and I certainly hit mine. It's kindness, it's warmth, it's friendship. Where we're all older, everyone's experienced everything there is in life to experience, all the ups and downs. So whatever's happened to you, you'll always find someone that you can speak to that's been in a similar position. We've done really well with some elderly men who've lost their wives and been lost, really, and then they've tried to get their lives back together. And they've come, and honestly, leaps and bounds. Uh, and it's changed so many people's lives. And it's there for everyone. I've had so many wonderful experiences with the old times. I, I wouldn't even know where to start. It, it's just been brilliant. For Ashley, it's new beginnings in the face of many challenges. Background and growing up, I guess it was hard because I'm not from, so to say, a privileged background. Um, English wasn't my first language. Um, and coming to this country, having to learn it quickly, I struggled with education like throughout my primary school years. It's a path forward, a platform for a prosperous future. Being able to give young people the opportunity when they thought that they didn't have it, just, it's just like special to know. And now she's looking forward, not back. And for Frankie, it's the love of the game. Before this, I didn't have much like, opportunities anywhere, to be honest. Jim brought me in last summer for the second chance scheme because football wasn't really going my way. I'd been on trial at a few clubs and it wasn't really working out. It's the chance to fulfill a dream. I came in, worked hard for a month or two, just kept my head in the game, played, 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 and I got my opportunity. So for any other young footballers that want to do it, 
you know, if you just work hard and you keep motivated, then you'll make, then you'll get the chance. And this is the next step in his journey. So right now it's all about keeping up my fitness and then taking a chance when it's ready. Because a lot of clubs have been asking for me to join, but I'm just waiting for that right time that I'm keeping my fitness, making sure I'm steady on all my little attributes that I need to work on, and then going for it. This is our family. This is our future. This is our foundation. Today, I'm a captain on the Army West Point football team. Tomorrow, I strive to lead winning teams. Today, I study to excel in the classroom. Tomorrow, I can reach for the stars. Today, I am leading cadets during summer training. Tomorrow, I will be ready to lead soldiers on the battlefield. Today, I lead with character as the brigade commander. Tomorrow, my possibilities are endless. Westland, where leaders are made. Welcome to Ireland for the Mac Ace on Dublin Basketball Challenge presented by Inspira Sports in the home of hoops at the National Basketball Arena Dublin. Inspira Sports was created to build on the success of the first ever NCAA collegiate basketball tournaments held in Europe. Working with their partners, the Sport Changes Life Foundation, the teams have been out in the community visiting primary schools, speaking with the children and growing the game of basketball. This was really cool, interacting with the kids here. Videos, TikToks, dancing. They just were really, really excited, and that's a big part of it, too, is just seeing the smiles on their faces and building that connection and realizing the importance of just the effect that they can have through the sport itself. It was a lot of fun to learn about them and share our culture back in America. It's been really nice to hear them how what dreams they want to have, the questions they had, and then we played some basketball. They were dancing, we were hula hooping, so it was really fun to meet them. It's uh, you know an opportunity for us to give back. Uh, it's so much bigger than basketball and having an opportunity to come to schools and interact with the youth, being able to create some special memories. Maybe a message will stick with them and help them achieve one of their dreams and goals. It's just a once-in-a-lifetime experience to be out here and really get to see another country, get a chance to play basketball somewhere around the world. So I'm just really enjoying this experience. That's what it's all about. It's about inspiring future generations on both sides of the Atlantic. This week it's Dublin, next week it's London. Showing our young people that their future is filled with endless opportunities. This is just the beginning for Inspirus in their global strategy to reconnect the world through sport and education and promote their mission to inspire us all through sport. associated with winning. But what do you think? We as Victory Scholars represent these three words. Sport changes life. We believe that you can achieve victory in every aspect of your life. I believe in inspiring young people and a good education. This sport has changed my life. But I don't just believe in victory. I am victory. Apply now at sportchangeslife.com. We're building for the future. We're here to shape lives. We're making an impact. We're making a change. On and off the pitch. Because we are a family and we take care of our own. For Eileen, that's friendship. A way back in from the cold. I was in a very bad place. My marriage had broken up. I had really bad depression and anxiety. I nearly lost my children, really, because... Um, they just didn't know how to cope. Everyone has their breaking point, and I certainly hit mine. It's kindness. It's warmth. It's friendship. Where we're all older, everyone's experienced everything there is in life to experience, all the ups and downs. So whatever's happened to you, you'll always find someone that you can speak to that's been in a similar position. We've done really well with some elderly men who've lost their wives. 
and been lost really and then they've tried to get their lives back together and they've come and honestly leaps and bounds uh, and it's changed so many people's lives. And it's there for everyone. I've had so many wonderful experiences with the old ones. I, I wouldn't even know where to start. It, it's just been brilliant. For Ashley, it's new beginnings in the face of many challenges. Background and growing up, I guess it was hard because I'm not from, so to say, a privileged background. Um, English wasn't my first language. Um, and coming to this country, having to learn it quickly, I struggled with education like throughout my primary school years. It's a path forward, a platform for a prosperous future. Being able to give young people the opportunity when they thought that they didn't have it, just it's just like special to my heart. And now she's looking forward, not back. And for Frankie, it's the love of the game. Before this, I didn't have much like opportunities anywhere, to be honest. Jim brought me in last summer for the second chance scheme because football wasn't really going my way. I'd been on trial at a few clubs and it wasn't really working out. It's the chance to fulfill a dream. I came in, worked hard for a month or two, just kept my head in the game, played, 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 and I got my opportunity. So for any other young footballers that want to do it, you know, if you just work hard and you keep motivated, then you'll make, then you'll get the chance. And this is the next step in his journey. So right now it's all about keeping up my fitness and then taking a chance when it's ready. Because a lot of clubs have been asking for me to join, but I'm just waiting for that right time that I'm peaking my fitness, making sure I'm steady on all my little attributes that I need to work on, and then going for it. This is our family. This is our family. This is our family. Welcome back to the Copper Box Arena here in London. It is finals day at the London Basketball Classic. I'm Mark Woods alongside Mike Tuck, and it's been an extraordinary few days basketball here. A half time in the third place playoff. It is Army leading Manhattan 36 points to 31. We're just a few minutes away from the start of the second half. At half time, we have been treated to another exhibition. There's lots of entertainment going on here. It's wonderful spectator viewing. And we had another shot of seeing Dave Hopler, who is the world record holder for pretty much every shooting statistic going by this morning. This was to try and get as many free throws consecutively. Uh, this morning in practice, he did 26, which is his world record. In a couple of times we see him here, he is a metronome in the way that he shoots the ball. Former shooting coach, of course, for a number of NBA teams. And just they just keep going in and in. And then here he is again. One of the others speeding the pace up slightly here. Oh, finally, just didn't quite go. He will take so many of those opportunities. And uh, I'm sure you'll have another crack at that again before too long. But here is that first half when Mike. It really went early on. Everything was going in for Army. Well, here it is. Manhattan started to come back, began to make things happen. It was as much as 16 points. The gap at one stage. Army in control towards the end of the first half. Ah, began to get out on the break. It was Jasper time. Yeah, and Army starting the game very strong, but it was that big Manhattan run towards that last 10 minutes of the game that really kept them in it. And that, you know, it's one of those ones where if you you know you can go down big early, but you just you just got to stick with it. You know, the game is 40 minutes, lots of time to come back and. Huge shot from Samir Stewart there in transition. Really was really like seeing the, the defensive energy from Samir Stewart. He was really a, a big a key piece of turning them around and getting them their energy back in the right place. Yeah, Colton Benson though we saw there a game high 12 points for him and four of six shooting from the field, leading all scores. Manhattan led by seven points and four rebounds from Josh Roberts. That 11-0 run they had late. In the first half, trimmed the gap just enough at the end there for Army to continue this in 
lead into the second half shooting 48 percent from the field today that's been the keystone for their success so far and Patton, as we've said have shot over 40 percent from the field in all of their four games so far mike if they heat up in the second half they'll feel confident in bringing this back yeah you know it's sitting at 36 percent from the field and only 25 percent from three i think just need to get a couple more quality shots maybe a little bit later in the clock make the defense work for it Manhattan in white on the west point in gray it's no surprise the first play drawn up is for the big man roberts he had he's had a great tournament so far and carrying over today leading the manhattan jaspers with seven points here going into the second half three officials out there this afternoon carl luciano adam vandenberg ed Corbett jr christmas day afternoon here in london morning in the states if you're watching us across the Atlantic you're very welcome the really ideal Saturday morning entertainment that very entertaining from Samir Stewart great play by Nelson there he is very tricky with that ball hard to stay in front of able to get a good drive and kick Samir Stewart after hitting one in the first half he's carried over and hit another one here in that second and we see Stewart three of nine from the field. Army bringing it down the screen, re-screen from Peterson here. Travel called. Chance to level. Drive, finish with some venom by Josh Roberts. Woo, high octane, high pace basketball. That's what Manhattan needs. Tied ball game. Brought this game back. You can see the energy coming off that Manhattan bench right now. Josh Roberts, nine points to lead the Jaspers. He did lead two and zero, but that was as good as it got for them in the first half. Second foul from Smith. First team foul. Second half, going to the line. Ethan Roberts. Ethan Roberts to the foul line where he's been very proficient this season. I just cursed him with that, though. Yes, you did. <laughs> Over 83%. We'll go again. Three of four from the line today. Make that four of five. And levels him on high score of the game here. With his teammate, Benson. And he's been a consistent offensive threat for Army all night. Hyun was lurking in the wing, wanted a handoff to Stewart. Drive from Nick Brennan. Army ball though. Looking for some room, just, just enough air. Got, got the shot off, couldn't make it. Nelson, Bob, and Weave. They go back out to Stewart. Kick towards Roberts. See where it ends up. It'll be an army ball. Samir Stewart won't be happy with that turnover. It was a nice little pass, very almost like a deja vu play from the last time we saw the dish down to the big man. But. Fortunately, not able to get his hands on it. Jimmy Allen talked a lot about only taking care of the ball. And it's getting nine turnovers so far. Just three points given up off them though, so they've done well to recover. Long ranger from Hyun. Off the back of the rim. Jalen Rucker, SWAT from Roberts. Huge defensive play there from Roberts. And we've seen this a few times from him before. Incredible rim protector. And able to get off his feet quite quickly there. Just uses that length so well. And the other Roberts.
Hyun with a steal, breaks up court and gets the finish. And for the first time since the first minute, it is Manhattan in the lead. An army here, you know, we talked about taking care of the ball, careless turnovers, live turnovers leading to easy points in transition. And, you know, here's another army turnover. Benson in the corner stepping on the line. That Army bench is not going to be happy about the current state of affairs. You know, I'm a hot coach. I'm sure the stories when I spoke to him just before Tepo he said that's our big thing today. No turnovers. Just four so far. 13 points conceded off them. Remember that will hurt in the lead though with momentum. Nick Brennan inside the follow-up from Josh Roberts. God, how athletic is Roberts out there? Able to grab the ball out of the air when no one else was there and finish with a nice little behind the head layup. Now they'll take away Stewart from the corner. Foul underneath. Frustration on the face of Charlie Peterson. Who immediately goes to the bench I think that's Charlie Peterson's fourth foul there the big man is going to be frustrated with that one he's going to have to go take a seat A. Johnson checking in in his place played just four minutes in the first half a lob the finish wonderful play Roberts has come alive here in the second half he's just all over the place. The guy plays high level above the rim basketball. 13 points for him. 6-0 run for the Jaspers. Stopped. At that point. Let me get a timeout here. The Jaspers up by five, and we've got another guest on. So a little presentation earlier on at halftime to celebrate England's success, a gold medal success at the, the Commonwealth Games last summer. My old pal Julius Joseph has joined us. I saw you last night. I see you again today. Are you enjoying the basketball? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me. It's been a great game. It's great to see uh, college basketball at this level. You know, it's, it's a little bit different to professional basketball that we get to watch. Um, it's been really enjoyable so far. I meant to look this up this morning. Georgia State. Georgia College. Close. Well, yeah, that's close. 20 years ago in memory. The mind has not gone completely. What was your college experience like? Uh, I had a great college experience. I was an uh, honorable mention All-American. So uh, we got to the Elite Eight. This was Division Two basketball. Um, so, yeah, it was really good and uh, really enjoyed it. Lifelong friends, as you do, you know, go back and visit them once in a while. So, yeah. You, you coach a lot of young players, particularly in the summer. You know, a lot of your involvement now is with 3x3, but obviously you're, you're a school teacher by day. You work, you've got, you know, work with kids in your program. How important is it to come here and be able to see college basketball up close, particularly for those young players across Europe who are thinking, you know, should I take my game there? Should I go pro? Now you're getting a chance to experience it up in life. A hundred percent. I mean, young people getting to watch this and exposing UK young players to college basketball in America and seeing the level that they play is, you know, it's inspiring. And it's, this is can inspire a generation, you know. You know, there's a lot of talk about hoop dreams and, you know, the, the fashionable and the culture thing is to go out and play in the States. But to see what it actually entails to actually be successful on a collegiate level in America is a whole other story. And just getting to watch people up close from America coming over here, you know, it's a once in a lifetime choice and experience. And when you see it, you know, with, with so many, we see so much British talent go to America making making a name for themselves. Um, and then they come back and you know, it's that great balance that Julius, when you see them, you know, yes, they've had that basketball education, but they're coming back with degrees and education and things they can use in the future. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, that's got to be the focus. You know, you're going out to, to college or university in the States and, you know, the primary focus has to be coming back with that to create the education. Because then, you know, if you want to try to play professional, you can have a go and see what happens. And if it doesn't pan out, obviously, you've got that degree to 
fall back on. So it's kind of a, a low risk if you're going to play that professional basketball. And you heard that as well, Mike. You, 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 obviously, you go there. That's that's the recruitment thing. You go there with that big aspiration to play. But the education is the thing now that you finish playing is what you lean on. Yeah, and like Julius has said it right there. That's if you get the degree, so you have something to fall back on. And that's the beauty of, of the NCAA system. There, you know, you, you know, obviously, you get to play basketball at an extremely high level and. At, at, at a good standard, but then you're you're also getting your education, and it's just you know developing you as as uh, not only a basketball player, but you know as a student, as, as a person, um, you know really helping you, you know progress in your life. And just what do you think the quality of hoops here? Are you what are you seeing from this game? Oh, as you, you know, with your coaching heart on. So 100, percent just the execution and the detail and the sharpness of these you know these collegiate athletes, and that's kind of what it is they drilled really well offensively defensively and it's a whole nother level of basketball it's the kind of level you were at 20 years ago when you're in your pump but you know <laughs> you still have fond memories of it jj always good talking to you thanks for joining us thank you thank you Cheers. chris man cutting the gap they are just back to two from the foul strip it will be a jasper's ball 15 minutes and 16 seconds left in this third place playoff here at the Copper Box Arena in the London Basketball Classic presented by Inspira Sports. Three made from Nick Brennan. All of a sudden, this man, man, Manhattan team has really come alive here. They've really found their offensive rhythm, taking it to him, but Rucker. Had some say about it down the other end, a little teardrop shot over the outstretched hands of Roberts. Rucker, three of seven from the field today. Six points in the game. Three points the deficit. Does that increase? Not quite. Foul on the floor. They're scrambling for the rebound. Goes against Jared Cross, who picks up his second foul. Nolan Ness returns for Army. Watson with the feed to Cisse. Back out to Stewart. Jumper buried by Nick Brennan. This one, Nick Brennan didn't look like he had any other options. He turns and shoots, and great little 18-footer from him. Nine points he has in this contest. Possession arrow. Favor of Army. Cisse getting on the ground. Hustle, big hustle play. Love to see that energy. You can see how much it means both teams now. Say a big chess player strategizing there. Just look at the statue here. Army already on 13 turnovers, while Manhattan only has four. Army has got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. Careless turnovers, careless possessions are leading to easy offenses down the other end for the Jaspers. Line bolt, shot clock at 20. Go inside. They go outside. Foul. In the meantime, first foul against Watson. Army trying to take advantage of the the size mismatch they had there on the post with Abe Johnson and Nick Brennan. Set to 20. They've got the ball eventually in. Hands of course gives it to Rucker in the lane. Tough shot. Rucker. That first step of his super quick. Really tough player to stay in front of here. Downhill action here. Skips past Nelson. It was just that extra gear, wasn't it? Yeah, he's, he's able to level it up. It's that aggressiveness right now and that will willingness to score that's going to be needed to get them back in this game. Okay, makes the first member of that Patriots League, Patriot League's old rookie team last year. He averaged 17 points a game. Seven, 
with eight points in this game. Nelson from deep on time. Whew. What a tough shot from Nelson there. Able to create for himself off the dribble. Well, no shortage of confidence. It misses first three attempts from beyond the arc. But if at first you don't succeed, here he goes. This Nelson Rucker matchup has been a pleasure to watch all night. A little bit too much contact there for the refs. Rucker able to draw the foul. Six point lead for Manhattan. Plenty of time for that to swing back and forth. Uh, Nelson is not going to be happy with that cause. Back to back fouls they're called on Nelson. He's third personal and he's a little bit too hands on on defense. Got to play defense with your feet. Stay in front of the ball. Stays in, though. Payne batted out of bounds. Goes and says a hello to the crowd up close. How many deflections and steals and turnovers has Hyun created tonight? He's done a great job of getting out in those lanes. Product of that Mahabi Haifa junior system before he opted to go stateside. What a promise. Look a high but wide. And Nelson a half court guarded by who else? Jalen Rucker. And gets help from Watson. Shot clock down to eight. Marquise Watson won't drop. Colton Benson leading all scores for Army with 12. Beautiful feed, beautiful finish from Johnson. And it is a four point ball game. Big play from Johnson. His first two on the night. If you're going to make your mark on the game, that's how you do it with a big dunk above the rim. Terrific alertness from Benson, his second assist. Drew the defense away. Nick Brennan off the board. He into double figures with 11 points. Another great mid-range jumper there from Nick Brennan. Kind of, I think he knew what he was going to, going to do before he even caught the ball there. Great little off the glass shot. Manhattan with another big steal here. Say the local boy made good for Manhattan. Humber a boy as Nelson scores from the elbow and gets the bonus. This Manhattan team have come out looking like a brand new squad here. Great energy from them, great offensive flow. Nelson really letting the game come to him, coming off the screen there, and we see. Rucker not being able to fight out through the screen. Army having a switch. And Nelson able to knock down a tough pull-up jumper and draw the foul. Army not going to be happy with that call, but also the last few possessions and their energy. You know, sitting here down six with 11 minutes left. Back to the drawing board. Yeah, this is the drawing board for these coaches just a few games in to their non-conference schedule both coaches talking about the testing their teams wanting to learn for the bigger tests ahead back in action of course when they return to the states manhattan's next game on december the first a thursday night against fairfield a 7 p.m start at Drady gym and the army's next contest november the 30th Merchant versus Merchant Marine Academy at 6 p.m. Start for that. You can head to that college website to get your tickets for that. Of course, the Army's conference schedule beginning just after Christmas in the Patriot League when they face Lehigh. And a real opportunity there to make a mark. 
for these games. Um, Brian Glover has joined us. Welcome, Brian. Um, I'll let you drink your water. You almost had to guzzle it there. What's, uh, how are you enjoying this? No, it's great. Thursday was great, and today's even better. The standard of the basketball is fantastic, and for myself and us as an organisation to be a part of such a fantastic event on its first occasion, we're proud to be a part of it. I mean, tell us about, about the foundation, you know, around London West Ham Foundation. What, obviously, we all know the name of the football club. We see the shiny stadium across the Olympic Park from here. Tell us what the foundation does on a, a week to week basis. So, in terms of the foundation, we deliver multiple programs across the community 30 plus delivery programs that encompass football to community activation pieces and we're obviously in all the department within the club and we want to keep doing what we're doing and serving the community and the needs that require our services and it's so important as we've seen with the players and these teams to come over here and get out in the community and, and you have stars household names some of them at the world cup of course at the moment of course it, it must be so great to to be able to utilize not just the brand but these players and give them an opportunity to oh, do something outside of the football pitch yeah it's, it's fantastic and an aspiration element is key to any community and any program we do and that's why it's been great with the teams coming out to our community partners and schools this week and a lot of people in our community may not get the chance to travel so to meet international stars both our football inside the male and female and academy stars and the basketball athletes this week has just been fantastic. It's something they will always remember. And when you see you know, America and what they do, and you know, there's this great tradition there of of, of foundations and, and off-court benevolence of NBA teams, NFL teams, college yeah. teams, whatever. You must take a lot from that in terms of how you can use football as, as a power for good, for sport to be a power for good in, in and around London. Oh, sport, football, it just engages people. It, it, it's sport for development, which and you can combine that with education, you can make such a difference. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see organisations like Sport Changes Life sported as well. Um, actually, actually, it's a football team. I'm sure you're not usually watching football, but how's your take on basketball? Are you enjoying this? Uh, I, my family, especially my younger brothers, they love basketball. So growing up, it's sort of a little bit. But yeah, football is my main sport. But yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it surprised me how fit the athletes are, how athletic they are. <laughs> Look at the warm-up, especially on Thursday. I'd have been uh, exhausted before I started the game, but no, it's uh, it's fantastic. I love being a part of it and being so close to it is uh, it's, it's really good. And are you enjoying the World Cup, seeing some of your guys in, uh, in action in Qatar? Yeah, I'm enjoying the World Cup. Um, the performance obviously wasn't as good last night as we'd have liked, but we're still in a strong position in the group. And yeah, the World Cup as a whole, it's just something that grabs everyone, doesn't it? So some great results. Well, we uh, wish you continued success at the West Ham Foundation. It's terrific work. And... Um, Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Fifty-five, fifty, the lead for Manhattan. Matt Nelson there taking a drive down the baseline. Thought he got knocked a little bit. Able to break down his defender here a little bit, but trying to get the call and fortunately the kick out pass no one was there time and change to play in this third place game at the London Basketball Classic the inaugural one for the first of many to come nowhere to go for Chris Mann but let me recover shot clock at five Traveling though, committed by Barker. That's going to be frustrating right there. You know, the Army had a couple positive plays there leading up to that possession, and you know, tough another turnover possession there for Army. You know, not taking care of the ball, not valuing those possessions, and now sitting at 15 turnovers that they can't get back. Nelson has been outstanding in the second half. Keith Watson, bullet pass into the corner. Nelson, another big, big bucket for Ant Nelson. It was 11 points in this game, and the lead is stretched to eight. What an impact he's had on this game tonight. You know, Nelson sitting at 10 points for the evening. And a big Sorry, defensive me, stand points. there from Roberts. Manhattan really looking like a more put-together team in this this second half. 
pressure of a second block of the contest. Just two rebounds shy of a double double. Samir Stewart from deep. They are rolling, they are going, and the Jaspers are stretching their advantage for the first time into double figures this evening. I keep saying this evening because we're indoors and it feels like basketball should be the evening. <laughs> Still mid afternoon. Not sure what time zone I'm on. Not the same one as this team. But anyway. Foul Good job from it. Army here. You know, Roberts playing a little bit too physical. But this is exactly what Army needs right now. Is slow this game down. Get a couple free throws in. Try and get this lead back under 10. And chip away. And here's a guy who just subbed back in. Peterson. Obviously picking up some early fouls, getting into foul trouble, having to sit on the bench. They've definitely been missing his presence out there on the court. Blake Barker, two for two from the line, yet to miss this season from the foul strip. His first points of the game has cut the gap to single figures. Samir Stewart skips around. They go to Watson. Nelson now in the wing. This Manhattan team, you know, we talked about how the brotherhood aspect and how all these guys really play like brothers, and they've really shown that in the second half. You can tell they're much more of a cohesive unit. They're playing unselfishly, playing for each other, and that's what's got them back into this game and given them such a good lead. Second foul against Ethan Roberts. Knocked away. It will be an army ball from the end line. Tough one there, Nelson. You know, so tricky to stay in front of. And a little touch pass off the chest of Roberts. Couldn't get his hands on it. <laughs> Roberts just... His presence alone in that paint, you know, he is changing shots. You see Benson here with the drive and just jumping straight up. Hands probably 11, 12 feet in the air on that one. Team fouls. Now a factor. It's Charlie Peterson. Heads to the foul line for the fifth time. Saturday afternoon. And that foul put Stewart on on four. So we'll see him head to the bench here. But he's been uh, quite the difference maker for this team here tonight. His hustle plays, his ability to find guys on the offensive end, and then his ability to knock down some tough, tough. Shots, including three pointers, three three pointers, three three pointers. <laughs> <laughs> Good tongue twister. Brazil high unit is checked back in for the Jaspers. The lob, the finish, <laughs> the high time, the Roberts special. And this guy, how athletic is Roberts? Every time you think he's, we've seen the top notch, he seems to take it up to another level. Oh. A big answer there. From Rucker, that's going to put him up to 11 points personal. Four of ten from the field. And Army are hanging in. They are hanging in and here bravely. 7:46 to play. And at this stage of the year, Mike, you know, we, we, you know, coaches talking about testing their their teams early to get ready for conference schedules. You know, they're probably both you know five weeks away from the start of of conference play. How much do you try and get that momentum early? You know, is there a trade-off a bit between learning, being able to make mistakes early in the season so when you get to conference time, you're ready and have ironed out those mistakes? Yeah, I mean, that that's the luxury that these teams have right now is that this is not conference play. So it gives them an opportunity to test out some new things, test out some certain lineups, you know, a little bit more lenient where you can make some mistakes and... and, and you're not going to be burned with it with a you know a loss in, in your conference play but obviously these teams are, are are out here to win and they they want to win and 
building momentum here in this in this uh, in this early on in the season pre-conference play is, is very important. Um, and what what a better what not a better tournament for these teams to do it? You know, every team mid-major, you know, all in the kind of similar type of level. So all these games are winnable games for each of these teams. Yeah, Manhattan was so much success in the MAC over the last few years. Won two conference titles in a row before they lost to CNN in the quarterfinals last year. But you know, eight straight finals up to that point. You know, they're they have that great consistency in their conference. Yeah, and then you know. Considering what's gone on, you know, with, with with the coach leaving and and all the turmoil that's been going on off the court, this team is still kind of finding a way to, to put put together, you know, a solid team. And we talked about the talent that they have. You know, obviously losing the MAC Conference Player of the Year in the portal uh, right before the season started, but they've been able to put together some really talented guys here. The only one thing they're they're, they're kind of missing is that veteran veteran leadership, but. Finding a way to win here, and you know, Coach Storrs talked about that brotherhood. You know, he's able to put together a team of guys that will go out there and, and play for each other. I mentioned Siena there. I was talking last night to, to Kyle and Elson, former GB International you know, native of, of England, about to move there as assistant coach of the women's basketball team. It's a, it's a great from our point of view to see British talent. If she flourished across, flourished across in America as a player, and now come back there as a, as a coaching staff and taking that experience. Oh, it's it's incredible to see. You know, you want you want to see the the big names in British basketball making their mark and whatnot. But a better place to do it over in the states in NCAA. Seven thirty to go. Who will finish third? From the London trip, will it be Army or will it be Manhattan? Jasper is in control at the moment. Jalen Rucker, though, with many more things to say. Terrific ball movement, got a good look from the perimeter, doesn't fall though. And the shooting slips, they're still making 45% from the field in this game. It's not as many shots in the second half. Better defense from Manhattan. Picked away. And Nelson. Chris Mann. Nelson creating the contact there, but the referee not not giving him that call. Another turnover from Manhattan here. Chris Mann in traffic. And once more, Josh Roberts elevated. But the ball was on the down. And it is a good basket. Brennan's gone down. It's teammates helping him up gingerly. Seems to be okay. Timeout is called. Six point ball game. A good timeout here for Manhattan. Gives them a chance to sit down and talk about it here. And all of a sudden, you kind of see a little bit of momentum heading in, in Army's way, a little bit of confidence. You know, only down six here with six minutes left. They're definitely within striking distance. And Army, you know, we saw against Princeton the other night when they lost 74-66. You know, they were playing so well, and it was a 16-1 run from the Tigers in the second half that really swung the game. I guess if, if you're Jimmy Allen, you're sitting there you, and you're talking about taking something from one game into the next game, it's about that second half you know, application. It's about not giving up. It's about having that concentration, that focus right to the finish. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's a 40-minute 40, 40 game, right? And it's typically the team that can play that full 40 minutes or, you know, a longer 40, a longer game while they're locked in and focused. Those are the teams that are going to be able to pull it out here. So, you know, that first half obviously was swinging in Army's direction. The second half, early doors, they're not able to pull it together. But it is a 40-minute game, and we still have plenty of uh, time left on the clock to finish this one out. And you talk about you're trying to get some momentum. Rashawn Soares, we said, you know, just today, entering his second month as a head coach, you know, he's, you're looking to make a mark. He got his first win on the board the other night. And he'll want to get, build his own confidence up as a coach that things are coming together, but we're now heading back into the States. Yeah, I mean, what a great story from, from Rashawn here. You know, obviously, team captain two years in a row, and graduated back in 2016, and to be a player at a, at, a, at a school and the captain and then to come in a 
on an assistant coach basis, and all of a sudden now, now you're in an interim head coaching role. You know, he's a young coach. He's only 31. He's really going to be wanting to make his mark out there with this team, and, and you know that underdog mentality, that chip on his shoulder. You know, I'm I'm a young guy, but I'll be given this opportunity, and I've got a bunch of young talent on this team that we're going to make our mark and keep this legacy, this Manhattan legacy, that our name in, in, in good standing. And he was a walk-on on on a team that then went on to win the MAC championship as well. I mean, you talk about the underdog story. He's right there. Yeah. So he's been there. He's been there from the bottom, and he's made it all the way up to the top. And to, for a guy who was a walk-on to be named team captain, you know that that speaks volumes about his character and, and who he is as a person. Such great characters been shaped on the campuses of both these fine institutions. Basketball talent to the fore here in London on this Saturday. Lots of Christmas shopping going on just outside here today. Across the park in one of the biggest malls in London. Here, the biggest gift, the greatest gift they can get will be a victory. Six points to the difference. Six minutes to play. Ethan Roberts goes all the way, gets the reverse. Army are not done. Great take from Roberts there, you know. Able to break down his defender, get him on his heels, and then a downhill play towards the rim. Ethan Roberts, 16 points. To lead the Black Knights. And another turnover, another opportunity for Army to make this a one-shot game and they can execute this offense successfully. And the kick out, the three-point attempt. Stepped out of bounds, though. Not going to be happy with that call there. You know, we talked about turn, turning the ball over. It's their 16th turnover on the night. And after a great defensive possession, they come down. You want to try and get at least a good shot at the rim. And it will be that frustration because those are the momentum killers, isn't it? You're coming off you know, a 7-0 run over the last few minutes. You know, Manhattan's offense suddenly drawing up and you want to keep the pressure on. Yeah, definitely. You know, Manhattan on a little bit of a scoring drought here. Haven't scored in the last two minutes and 40 seconds. And Army able to cap capitalize on a couple possessions, but... It's all those little things right now that Army need. They need those little the, those little turnovers. They need to step up the defensive intensity. But then they need to put the ball in the basket as well. And you, you know, you got stepping on the line, little small turnovers like that that kind of takes the air out of the gym, deflates you a little bit. So presence of mind to stay locked in, stay focused, and at least get a good action towards the rim. Well, it has been action-packed this contest. Wonderful to watch. A great advertisement great ad for NCAA hoops and of course if you've enjoyed this and it's not been normally your thing plenty more to come over the season follow it all on NCAA.org yeah, so Nelson there posting up on, on the shorter rocker Fancied his chances there down there in the post and a nice move to the middle there. Rucker a little bit too much contact. Nelson, great recognition on that play. Calm as you like for Aunt Nelson. Ryan dozen points to go with his six assists and four rebounds. He's had a great trip. He's enjoyed his trip. You've enjoyed watching him. Two of two from the line. As we hit the five minute mark in this second half. Finish. And traveling is the call. Another unforced turnover there. Chris Mann. Great job of being aggressive towards the rim, but shuffled his feet there on that pump fake travel call. That's their 17th turnover. 
Brennan, hand off to Samir Stewart, guarded on the wing by Ethan Roberts, comes off the screen, has enough room, gets a shot off, short though, take by Mann. early on that player just a second foul against Watson you see this army team here not not giving up down the stretch here you know getting into some dangerous territory with just over four minutes left here down six Benson a good aggressive play towards the basket forcing the call sitting here in the bonus Take a trip to the line for one and one. Colton Benson. To the line for the third time today, yet to miss. A freshman out of Austin, Texas. On the rookie of the league award in the Patriot League last week. More than living up to his billing here. 4 4, perfect from the line. from Manhattan College Brennan over the back of the board and you can't be mad at the unselfishness and the ball movement the patience that Manhattan had there I think it was a good shot just didn't go in less than an hour away from tip-off in the championship game and it's Princeton against Northeastern and again after watching both these teams the other night I mean they they were both gritty they were both determined they both came over came adversely in the game to survive through to the final it's, it's gonna be a terrific game isn't it oh, I can't wait it's an exciting game coming up you know both these teams really showcase what they had on Thursday night and, you know, Incredible overtime thriller win for Northeastern in that first one and then Princeton just able to get that job done in the second game So both these teams deserving to be in this championship match and really excited to have that game this afternoon Yeah, you'll be able to watch that same place right here on the Hoops Fix YouTube channel Check online on your socials. You'll be able to find all the links that you need Otherwise, you can follow the London Basketball Classic on Twitter at London Classic. If you want to head online, find their website. You can go to LondonBasketballClassic.com. 3.58 left here. And it'll be the Jaspers on the flight back across the Atlantic tomorrow with a smile on their faces, or will it be the Black Knights? The country had so many nights back in the day. A happy smile, a happy trip. All these players with an opportunity while they're here to see see London experience. A lot of the players last night were off watching the World Cup in a traditional English pub. Sample the atmosphere. Most of them, of course, you know, rooting for opposite to the majority in the pub, but, you know, that's all part of the fun. That's it. <laughs> uh, you, uh, your native Canada in action as well yesterday. That's it, yeah. It's great to see them uh, back in the World Cup, first time since 1984. And, um, Canada is, uh, you know, a country built with a lot of different immigrants from different nations, and when the World Cup comes around, it's a very popular time in Canada. A lot of, a lot of, you know, especially in my hometown, Toronto. You know, all the pubs, all the bars there, will all have it on. And the kind of beauty of it is that everybody will be representing their their different nations, their different motherlands. But now we've actually got our own home country in the, in the thing. So all in all, my friends back home have been uh, waving the flags high in these last two weeks. Canada hosting the 2026 World Cup with the United States and Mexico. So lots to look forward to if you're a football slash 
soccer fan in North America. Is Canada is it soccer or football? It's soccer in Canada. Well, yeah. Sorry about everything. that. Sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> Cut with both. It's fine. Football is football. Soccer is soccer. An army there with another turnover and over back call from Benson. Not what you want to see, especially coming out of a timeout situation. Keith Watson with the kick out. Ball movement all the way around to Brennan. That could have been so big. That is big, though, from Marquise Watson. The wow. follow up. And Watson's a guy we saw down the stretch in the last game. He he is a big time player and he steps up in big time situations. And Manhattan, just the ball movement, the unselfishness, they just look like a very cohesive unit right now. Chris Mann had room in the lane. Instead, kicks it to the corner. Go with the miss. Another opportunity. Roberts from deep buries it. A huge possession for Army right there. Able to stick with the play, get the second chance opportunity. And Roberts, pump fake, bides his time. Big three to put them within three down the stretch here with two over two minutes left in the game. Austin Roberts had 19 points in this game. Leads all scorers. Nelson has shot clock expired, unable to convert. What a play! What a vital play! What a score to tie this game from Colton Benson. 17 points he has. None perhaps more vital than that. We are level with two minutes left. 67, play 67. Samir Stewart in response, though, with a huge three ball. His fourth three pointer of the game. Advantage Manhattan who get the transition and the steal gets it back to back so nearly. Army survive. Crowd here loving this. Heave the mate from Benson doesn't go rebound. Vital rebound from Mann. Army will reset. Patience from Rucker. Plenty of time left. Rucker looks for help. They go out. They go inside though. Foul is called with seven left on the shot clock. Here we see it again, Mike. Yeah, you can see here, man, great decision there. Draws in the bigger defender, Roberts, and a hard foul from Brennan on Peterson. No easy buckets down the stretch here. Start following Brennan. Well, you said it. The uh, the atmosphere in here has really picked up. Both teams really locking in and focusing in on this last couple minutes of play here. And see Peterson not able to connect on that first one from the free throw line. Every shot counts right now. Peterson, he had to get a field goal tonight. Just two of six from the foul strip where all his points have come from. One of two there. Two points, the gap. Stewart. Wonderful ball control. Skips around. Less than a minute to play. Stewart got bumped. Gives it to Nelson. Well, he had room. It was a good shot. He's made it from there. Doesn't go. Army. Sigh relief. It will be a Manhattan ball. That's yeah, a tough one. I mean, if I'm Roberts there, I, I'm passing. I'm making the extra pass instead of over dribbling here. And he's fishing for a call there, but lost his footing and kind of just fell over. You got to move the ball, young fella. Keep keep it moving or, or let it fly. Meet Watson. Punching the air with glee there, just stood tall. Let the possession come to him. Now, in that huddle, Army West Point, considering their options. Jimmy Allen, K. 
keeping us team focused. 33.9 seconds remaining in this game. And Army still shooting the better of these two in this contest. 48% from the field. Oh, rebinding Manhattan by a huge margin, mate. 38 to 25, but it's all about points on the board. And that's what the advantage is now. Yeah, and I think for me, it's it's the turnovers have definitely let down uh, Army tonight. 20 turnovers. You think of all the possessions. That's 20 different possessions where they didn't weren't able to get a shot at the basket. Well, the narrows will be going. Hearts will be beating. You know what's at stake here. You want to go home with a win under your belt. Manhattan within reach. Pressure on though. The break from Nelson. Feed just a little bit too hard towards Roberts. He was fouled as quickly as possible. 24.4 seconds remaining. Manhattan with the luxury. See Nelson here. He uh, really wanted to get that dump pass off to Roberts. And Army making a good decision to send Roberts to the line. Roberts just a second trip to the foul line today. Made his previous attempt. Now is 16 points. It's just one rebound shy. And we double double. Big hit for Roberts. They're only a 40% free throw shooter. That's a huge one. If he can increase the lead, it is a two shot game. Ice in his veins from behind. Another point of insurance here with 24 seconds left on the clock. That has held on somehow. I haven't shot the ball particularly well over the last few minutes, but they're keeping this. And the foul, the foul has been committed. As Colton Benson shot off balance. Almost a desperation three-point attempt. You see it here. A kick out to the perimeter. They were trying to close him down. Officials see signaling there was contact. And that it's called on Stewart's. That'll be Stewart's fifth foul. And we'll see Stewart's having a bout of the game. Foul trouble all night, but what a contribution he's had to this game tonight. 14 points and five of 15 shooting, five assists as well, three boards. And he will sit and watch and hope and wait. See if his teammates can close this out in his absence. Hayun has checked back in in his place. As Benson, who is a perfect four for four from the line so far, takes his first of three attempts. Second good two. Whatever happens, they will come out of this score. Still trailing. Still needed to force something. Three for three. He can do no more. 19 points he has in the game. Now pressure, full court pressure. To give it to Nelson. Double team comes. They get out of the press. Well, Keith Watson is fouled at the midcourt. See Army really putting on the pressure here. Full court press, sending the double. Great over the head pass there from Nelson. And Watson fouled. Army have got to stop the clock as they're in the deficit. Now they will go and huddle quickly to talk strategy. And at this point in time, when you're if you're in that huddle there with Jimmy Allen, what are you preaching? Are you preaching a play? Are you preaching composure? Or you know, at this point, you want the simplicity. But 
you've got to have ultimate, you know, different options here for depending on what you get. Yeah, I mean, you're, you know, obviously we're, we're going to the free throw line here, so you're gonna have a you're gonna have a, a set for a, a miss, or you're gonna have a set for for a made basket. I'm assuming we'll see a timeout if if it's a make, but on a miss. You know, we're, we're, we're going down in a transition action. We're going to have something that we've worked on in the previous week to, to get them down there. And, you know, sitting out at one point, so we don't need a three. We just need a good look at the basket. So trying to get a downhill action towards towards the rim and a finished high percentage shot. So it's a wonderful atmosphere in here. We've got the Manhattan Band. The, uh, I can't even name the big instrument. Tuba? That's the one. <laughs> going at full blast keyboardists guitarists drums yeah and, uh, you know playing in the back all those years ago for me manhattan was a school that uh, we used to play against and they were you know known for having that uh all that on-court entertainment you know huge cheerleading squad huge dance team and, and their band you know legendary so nice to see a few members of that band making the trip across here to really add to the atmosphere of this whole event atmosphere has been wonderful over these last few days. He's got Keith Watson heads to the foul line and a miss. Well, now 11 seconds. It is all or nothing. Rucker. Five seconds. Rucker with nowhere to go. Knocked out of bounds. It is an army ball. Zero. Point five seconds left. Adam Cisse, the human blockade, checks in for Manhattan. Timeout is called. Officials will doubtless just check the clock to make sure even if a few extra tenths of a second are added on. Theoretically enough time for a catch and shoot here. This is the one where you're throwing it to a big fella and yep. hoping, praying. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have uh, a sideline out of bounds here, so you're going to have a couple different actions, and obviously your first look would definitely be towards one of the bigs, at something at the rim. Hopefully we can get a finish with that, you know, something close, a high percentage shot, but then you're going to also have secondary actions off of that where if the big isn't open, we've got to have another option for a shot. But... 0.5. Oh, they they bumped it up to one second here, so enough time for for a catch and shoot play action here. Well, we had overtime drama because of fouls, miss execution on Thursday night. Manhattan were in action in their semi-final against Northeastern. What will happen? Anything can happen. The drama yet to be unwritten. 1.1 second in fact is the final tally. Colton Benson will inbound the length of Adam Cisse in his way. Running pass interference. And a timeout has been burned. Someone has seen something. Both these coaches here, another opportunity to talk it over with their teams and what a game we have on our hands and coaches back in the huddle as Sean Stewart sits on his seat gathers his players around him composure will certainly be one of the instructions but then the tactics he's on his board scheming something defensively both these clubs hungry for a win here in the Copper Box, you don't want to be that team that goes home 0-2. And, and it's that gamble, isn't it, Mike? Yes, you want the defensive stand here, but also that concern. You, what you don't want is the foul. You don't want the chance to send Army to the line with a one-on-one, -on -one, the chance just to win this game. Exactly. You know, you want to make sure that you are playing good defense and nothing, nothing easy, no easy shots. You want to contest the shots, but... The absolute worst thing would be, you know, a trip to the line or an and one situation. And if you do foul, 
foul hard. Make sure they don't make it. Make them earn it. Ethan Roberts will now be the inbounder. Seaside jumping, bobbing, weaving. For the win from Rucker, does not go. And Manhattan celebrate. They have taken victory here and third place in the London Basketball Classic. They have beaten Army West Point 72 71. It was a good look. He's the guy you would go to, you would trust the ball. But Manhattan yeah. survived. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, you got the ball in the hands of a guy that you know you can trust to take a shot like that. I don't think the play was very well executed leading up to that moment and a guy who I would have liked to have seen on the floor was Benson uh, you know potentially because of the hot hand that he's had tonight but hey you got the ball into the hands of Rucker who's had a great little tournament here and he got a good look at the basket just not able to connect on the running jumper well Benson leads all scores in this game for Army 20 points he had Ethan Roberts adding 19 as well Chris Mann another outstanding game nine points nine rebounds as a Manhattan Josh Roberts sensational 17 points adding nine rebounds and he was just everywhere tonight and Nelson adding 13 points as well and it all round a terrific performance of Manhattan who improved their record to two and three on the season army now two and five and it will make that long journey transatlantic west tomorrow feel all the sweeter for Manhattan and what a few days it's been for them what a wonderful experience it's been for both these teams army a credit to their institution and their young men, I'm sure, will head home after one final evening in London. With such great life experience and some great memories of that as we see the Jaspers cheer squad on the court at the moment. And what a great day it's been for Manhattan. And we are lucky enough to be joined very quickly, sprinting up, still turn to speed, by head coach for Sean Storrs. Um, describe that game for us. It was a great game, a great feeling. I'm so happy for these young men and my staff. We've been putting a lot of work in throughout these last two or three weeks when I first took over. But we've just been facing adversity, and today we overcame adversity. We're so grateful. That's the key thing, being grateful and blessed. Coming back from the semifinal, which was all about drama, but you, know, you, you look at the small margins that it cost you that game. How satisfying is it to see your side survive a battle of war today? That's all we talk about every day is adversity. Get better one game at a time, one day at a time. You're going to face adversity in life on and off the court. That's what I teach these young men, and that's what they showed tonight. We faced adversity on Thursday. We came up short. We faced adversity tonight. We went in the show one. You and this experience, we're just saying it was one month yesterday was your anniversary from this. And the, we were talking about the incredible backstory you have, you know, a walk on, a player, not getting this opportunity as coach. How are you soaking this up? I'm just blessed. I'm blessed and thankful, man. I'm grateful. I'm blessed. I'm thankful. I thank my family. I thank Jasper Nation. But most of all, it's about these young men that I want to just prepare for the real world. And that's what it's all about with me and my staff. We've watched the basketball, and it's been great. But obviously, we keep talking about the experience of being able to come overseas and just what this London Basketball Classic offers to players and staff. Describe the, this four, five, six days you've had here. It's been great here. It was a chance for us to bond and, and build our brotherhood. A lot of these young men that's playing big minutes right now didn't play as much last year. I know they're an older team, but they didn't have as many minutes and valuable moments. But coming over here, we was able to speak to some young, young high school men and women. That, that, that means a lot. We get to know their culture. They get to know us. They get to know what it takes to get to where we're at. And, it's, and I, one thing we left with them is about adversity and battles. Everyone in life is going to face it. It's about how you respond. What's been your favorite sight to see? Uh, I like Big Ben. We went to um, West Ham Stadium. That was pretty fun. West Ham. So that was pretty fun. But all of London has been great to us. And we're seeing some of your highlights of, of this game on screen here. I'm, well, your player that we, we couldn't stop talking about uh, right throughout this game um, from start to finish, you know, it was there was just such great action. But Josh Roberts was outstanding. He's been playing. He's been playing very hard. He's been a vocal leader this year. I, I leaned on him a lot, especially early. But he's been a vocal leader, and he's showing that through his play. 
when you look forward now and you head back to the States and you know the conference schedule starting very soon, um, what's the learning point? I mean, you talked about the adversity, but you know, do you think, do you see this now as you're obviously ironing out the mistakes at this stage yes. of the year, but you know, do you feel like this is a team that can go on this season to conference success again? Yeah. Yes, for sure. But like I said, we got to take it one game at a time, one day at a time. And it's about the process. You're going to fall short sometimes in the process, but that's what it's about. It's about the process and just keep believing and keep maturing day in and day out. And you know, overseas trips? Yes. Thumbs up from for you, sure. I guess. Love London. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been great having you. It's been wonderful watching your team and your players and all the great stuff you've done off the court when we're here. Um, enjoy the last night in London. Thank and you. Great trip home. Thank you. Yeah, have a nice one. Thank you very much for Sean, and that is Manhattan, who will enjoy this Saturday night. We see some of the plays in the year from my, and you know, we talked about adversity there. They they did just enough and executed at correct times, particularly when they came back from that early deficit. Yeah, and that that, that was the the whole thing of the game. It was a, it was a game of two halves, really. You know, Army really putting the pressure on them early, building a big lead all the way up to 14, 15 points, and then. You know, that second half was Manhattan's half, and it was just a completely different team that went out there. They made some really good adjustments, and we just saw, you know, how Coach there was talking about the brotherhood. And we, that kind of really shone through for me in that second half. They really played for each other, you know, moved the ball, played unselfish, and did all the right things. Well, it was great to see. It's been wonderful entertainment on this Saturday afternoon. And it was great to see another dramatic finish as well. It went all the way to the very final minute. Army kept fighting, kept pushing. But shots like that just tilted the balance in favor of the Jaspers. And their second trip to the UK in four years. And this time they have ended up with third place in the London Basketball Classic. And the entertainment factor... The likes of Roberts there it was quite something to see. An army been terrific. So that's one game down this afternoon. It is Manhattan who have taken third place. We have a final coming up in less than 30 minutes time here in London. Who will be the inaugural victor of the London Basketball Classic? Will it be Princeton University or Northeastern University? Mike and I are away to get a cup of tea. You can join us back for the final here on the Hoopswix YouTube channel very, very soon. Triple, got it!